So starting off Unit 2, we're going to talk about matter, but before we do that, let's talk about the difference between energy and matter. So when we look at chemistry in general, chemistry is a science concerned with the properties, composition, and behavior of matter. But again, I'm using that word, and what is matter? Well, everything can be classified as either one of two things. It is either energy or matter. And when I say energy, energy really can be defined in physics, and it is a good operational definition for chemistry as well, as well as the capacity to do work or produce heat. Now, on the contrast to that, matter has to have two specific properties. It ha is anything that occupies space, and has mass. So if it occupies a space but has no mass to it, it is not matter. When we look at energy, energy has a, a multitude of different kinds. If you take physics, you'll look at elastic energy and um, kinetic energy and all kinds of energy, but really we have three kinds that are of importance in chemistry. One is potential energy. Potential energy is based on position or it can be defined as a stored energy. More on that in just a second. Kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. Someone that studies kinesiology or kinetics is interested in the movement of the human body or the, the, movement, of, uh, the movement of objects. And thermal energy. Thermal energy is the grand sum total energy of all the particles in a substance. So the next thing we should do is talk about each of these types in a little more detail. Chemical potential energy is a form of potential energy, so stored energy, that's related to the structural arrangement of atoms or molecules. There, it's either bonds within molecules, that's intramolecular, intra means within, or it's between molecules. Uh, for example, uh, hydrogen bonding between water molecules. Inter, international means between nations, so intermolecular means between molecules. And chemical energy that is potential isn't doing anything right now. It's a stored kind of energy, but it can be transformed by a chemical reaction into other types. So when we talk about kinetic energy, uh, we really have to go back to what we learned in Science 10, and that's the kinetic molecular theory. The kinetic molecular theory isn't something that you should have to memorize as long as you understand the meaning of those three words. Kinetic meaning to move, molecules being chemical units, and a theory being an idea or a tested hypothesis. So the kinetic molecular theory explains that all matter is made up of tiny chemical units or particles, molecules, and that these molecules are constantly in motion. That's why it's called kinetic, because kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Now when we look at different states of matter, different states of matter have different amounts of kinetic energy. Solids move very slightly. They don't change in position we say that they have a definite volume and a definite shape. Liquids, the particles move more. They move around within a set volume. We say that again, they have a, a set volume or a definite volume, but now they have an indefinite shape because they'll change their shape to occupy the, the shape of the container that they're in. Finally, there's gases, and gases, the particles, are actually made mostly of empty space. They're way far apart from each other, and they're moving very quickly relative to the other states. Uh, we say that these gases, because they're made of mostly empty space, have both indefinite shape, because they'll change their shape to occupy the container that they're in, and indefinite volume. You can compress them by putting more pressure on, or you can expand them by reducing the pressure. The last kind is thermal energy, and thermal energy is due to chaotic molecular motions. And when we look at thermal energy, it can be controlled by three main factors. One is the temperature. Temperature is, as we'll define later, a measure of kinetic energy. So the, the more or the higher the temperature, that means the faster the molecules are moving, therefore the greater their chaotic molecular motion. The sample size, because it's the total or the sum of all the motion of all the molecules, a larger sample will have more thermal energy than a smaller sample. 
and its composition. The thermal energy of solids is less than liquids and less than gases, all other things being equal. One measure of energy which is commonly confused with heat is temperature. Temperature is actually a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. So the faster molecules are moving, the greater their kinetic energy and therefore the greater their temperature. Now for our purposes in science, we'll use the scales of Celsius and Kelvin. What I want you to notice on the, on the Celsius scale is that the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water are exactly 100 degrees apart. Similarly, when we look at the Kelvin scale, the difference between the freezing point of water and the boiling point of water is again 100 degrees difference. The only difference between these two scales is where their zero is located. The Celsius scale was based, created by Anders Celsius, uh, is based around the boiling and freezing points of pure water. Kelvin has the same gradations or the same size of marks as the Celsius scale, so a 5 degree change in Celsius is the same as a 5 degree change in Kelvin, but it's based around an absolute zero point. This is the temperature where all molecular motion theoretically stops. You do have to notice the formula that's at the left at the bottom where Kelvin temperature is equal to your Celsius plus 273 you could more specifically say plus 273.15 um, and sometimes people have difficulty in remembering how to set that formula up is it the Kelvin plus the 273 or the Celsius plus the 273 if you can simply remember that Celsius temperatures can be negative where Kelvin temperatures cannot you can't go any slower than being stopped that will help you in setting up that formula. The last thing we're going to talk about today is how we can map out or classify matter. All matter, remember, is anything that occupies a volume and has a mass, but we can split it into two classes, either being pure substances or mixtures. When we look at pure substances, they can again be further classified into elements, or compounds. And when we look at mixtures, they can be further classified as being homogeneous or heterogeneous. And this is where we're going to take the direction of the course in looking at next, how do we, uh, how do we look at what is a pure substance versus a mixture and what specific properties do elements, compounds, and different kinds of mixtures have.